Okay, we're back with you. There are extremely technical issues. So let's get back to Andrew, who is making a duck dance, and he can update you on what you may have missed in the last five minutes. <laughs> no, I, I'm telling the story of this bug. Because, see, I, ref I say that, you know, the real value of, you know, all my years of cutting-edge technical experience is basically I've made all the mistakes already, and I know not to make them again. And after everyone did all this stuff to reconfigure the stream and play with things, I said, excuse me, and I wiped the lens with my shirt, and now it's not blurry anymore. Yay! So, <laughs> so aren't you guys excited? Now you get to see a better shot of Andrew's great beard and the old war horse, you know, here. Uh, I think it probably looked better blurry. I don't know. It's blurring again, so it'll go in and out. Okay. Um, so anyway, yes. Could the sh the short answer is concurrency is hard, but we fixed it, and you know we have a nice stable build. That doesn't mean we won't possibly could now. Doesn't mean we're not going to continue to work the things that we have. We're going to do over the next few weeks, maybe in preview form. But we do have something rock solid to let lots and lots of people in to beat on, um, and that's what counts. Oh, absolutely. And uh, one thing before we go to the uh, Q&A, uh, when, you know, we are talking about how stable the server has been and the, you know, even uh, the client crashes we have had, uh, we need to put a couple things in perspective, or actually one thing, or actually like 400 things. Uh, even though that we have uh, only been working on this game for now, even now, for less than a year, because uh, as we told all our backers we began the game in October, um, the server has been running so well. We've had, you know, 400 players and bots running around, you know, effects going off in a very small space with great usage of bandwidth, great usage of CPU, and as we said, no crashes. So that's not, you know, not too shabby for, uh, you know, a small team and the uh, amount of work we've done to date. And the best news, it's going to only get better from here. So with that, let's go to the Q&A. OK, now it's time for you to ask your questions. So hopefully you have thought of some. And uh, have at it. Let's see. <laughs> You're funny. McCavity says, calm down. Purely clean 1080p stream would be hand-holding. <laughs> All right, so do you have questions since this is a Q&A? They're about a five minute delay, so I'll have to give them some time. How will you make crafting enjoyable and fun, said Hartgen. Um, so when you look at crafting, when you look at any of the systems in the game, you know, how do you make it fun starts with, you know, who you're targeting. So in our case, our target demo for the crafting system are hardcore crafters, just as we've said during the Kickstarter. So what we're looking at, and this uh, I think there's a fairly good chance this actually might be talked about in the BSC. Um, what we're looking at doing is creating a system that is both enjoyable to do and doesn't induce carpal tunnel. And as somebody who out there and now driving is wearing the wrist braces, unfortunately, I'm a little bit uh, even more sensitive to that. So that's part one. The other part, I think, for the hardcore crafters, of course, is making sure that they can actually play a hardcore crafter full-time, make enough money, uh, gather the resources or buy the resources they need to actually be crafters. Because it's no fun if you, you know, can't actually craft your items because you can't afford to craft your items or you can't get the materials. Okay. Okay, next question. Let's see. What from... Sephiro, I'm going to spell all your names wrong and say them wrong too. What portion percentage of the game world will be dedicated to RVR? Subsequently, how much of the game will be safe? I think that's the real question. Uh, we're going to be working that out and uh, talking about that certainly with the players, but I think it's very safe to say that the vast majority of it. Yeah. Is it safe to say at least 75%? Oh, at least, yeah. I mean, look, you know, we've said the same thing as well during the Kickstarter and Anyone who knows me knows that uh, I tend to be very consistent about these things, is that the safe areas are really for two things. One, obviously for new players to come in, learn how to 
you know, play the game, and also for the main cities. And actually a third, I, I should add. Also as um, really a safety net is probably the best way to describe it uh, for when, look, we're in a tri-realm game, and during that, you know, any given day, one realm is going to be getting its butt kicked. And it's always nice to be able to go, all right, you know, tonight's not going to be a great night for us. I'm going to go back to the safe zone. I'm going to go into the city. I'm going to do some other things around it that I can do. And then, you know, work with my guys and gals and try to, you know, actually do something like mount the counteroffensive or plan on attacking a certain part of the world, you know, when you think you can get away with it. Um, so, you know, a game like ours, if the vast majority isn't open RVR, then we fail. Now, that said, there's... You know, if your realmsmen are doing their job, there's certainly going to be some areas that are fairly safe to be in. Exactly. For you, but... It's not binary. It's not enforced by the rules. It's enforced by sheer numerical su superiority yeah. of your side. Exactly. This isn't a binary thing. It isn't like if you own this territory, you're safe, and if you don't own this territory, you're not safe. It's not. It can't work that way. All right, question I think for Andrew. <laughs> How much will hooded cloaks affect the stability of the game and will be considered right at the beginning? Sorry, could you say that again? How much will hooded cloaks affect the stability of the game and will it be considered right from the beginning? Um, hooded cloaks, stability of the game, hopefully not at all. You know, that's, you know, that's not the kind of thing that should ever crash the game. Um, if we're doing a full-on cloth simulation, which I might have made a presentation about that, um, you know, that's something that can impact performance and something that we would limit to, you know, only you and the people immediately around you. Um, you know, probably under, uh, you know, under a config setting on how many people actually get cloth sim near you. But that's not, you know, stability, absolutely no problem. Um, as far as hooded cloaks, uh, you know, there are some in the game already. Um, you know, they're running around, they're not, and they look good. All right, chat, I know that they are slightly blurry, but at this point you can consider it a trial run for BSC days and what we can do or not do with Google Hangouts. And as pretty as Andrew and Mark are, I think you should be more interested in the questions. So let's listen to their audio and uh, deal with the slight blurriness of how they are. Uh, let's see. Bayman asks, do you have any elements of the game planned to encourage, enhance the solo PvP experience? Well, if this is a kind of sideways way to get in a question about stealth, I certainly am not going to talk about that now. <laughs> in terms of uh, uh, being able to solo as a PvP, PvP player, the answer is, of course, yes. I mean, I've made it very clear from the beginning that uh, one of my favorite playstyles is a solo player, so I, I, I certainly understand uh, a lot of the needs. You know, I certainly can't say I understand all the needs of the solo pvp -er, but I certainly understand some of the needs. And I think you'll see from our presentations, and you'll see from you know, the systems we're talking about, that we want people to be able to solo in this game. I mean, again, from the Kickstarter, <laughs> We want to allow people to solo. We want people to work in eight-mans. We want people to work in larger groups as well. We have to embrace the various play styles. The only thing that we don't want to embrace, really, and we've talked about this so many times, is we're trying to design this game, whether, you know, from the purely design side as well from the technical side, that it's not going to be a Zerg-only game. We, we would have failed if the only way to play this game successfully is to, you know, get in this giant pack and roam the world, then we screwed up. Yeah, I think uh, some of the stuff that's going in, uh, you know, Mark and Ben have working on, been working on some really interesting things which sort of give diminishing returns on increased numbers and, you know, the, like, just combat system, magic system, all that type of stuff. I'm not going to give the details, but I think, uh, I think you'll be happy with it. 